Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and another installment in my fishing tips and tricks series, Just a Tip. So this year in my quest to master every style of fishing and become as diversely skilled as possible, I'll be taking on Tinkara fishing. And this style of fixed line fly fishing originated in Japan more than 400 years ago, but here in the West, it's very much still in its infancy. And because of this, I have a unique opportunity to not only learn about Tinkara and take on new challenges, but to innovate within the space. And I think that we've already done that. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a brand new and improved method for attaching your level line to your Tinkara rod. We're gonna get right into it, but before we do, if you guys do enjoy the video today or learn something of value here, I'd appreciate it if you'd like, comment, or subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And now let's go to the table. All right, to get started here, we're just going to need a handful of things. First and foremost, you're going to be needing a Tinkara rod, and today I'm going to be creating a level line for my Dragon Tail Hellbender. Next, you're going to need some level line, and today I'm going to be using Dragon Tail's high visibility orange level line in size four, but you should get the size that fits your needs. Next, you're going to need some eight strand braided fishing line, and any eight strand braid will do, but if you do have choices, I'd go with something that is known for being abrasion resistant, like Suffix 832 Advanced Super Line, or J Braid X8 Grand. And I'd recommend that you go with something that is 20 pound test, but if you have something between 20 and 40 pounds, that will be perfect. Next, you're going to need some nippers or line cutters or scissors, something to cut the fishing line. And optionally, if you're a perfectionist, you can also use some UV resin, thin formula, flex formula, or both, and a high power UV light. If you don't have those things on hand, they are not necessary, so don't worry about it. So to get started, we first want to remove the tip plug from the Tinkara rod. The next thing we want to do is expose the Lillian, which is a super tough piece of fabric, which is fused to the tip section of our Tinkara rod. And we're going to prepare the Lillian by tying a figure eight stopper knot. And we want to form this stopper knot about a quarter inch away from the end of the Lillian. To form the figure eight stopper knot, we're just going to take the end of our Lillian here, and we're going to form a small loop by crossing it over itself and pinching it together just like this. Once we have formed our small loop here at the end of the Lillian, we just want to take that loop and perform a half turn with it towards us like this. Now this next part can be tricky just because we're working with a small piece of fabric, but once we have twisted that loop, we now want to take the tip of our Lillian through the back side of our twisted loop. And the easiest way to do that is to take the back side of our loop up and over the end of the Lillian just like that. Okay, now it's going to be a little bit tough to see it on such a small scale, but once we've taken the tip of that Lillian through the back side of our twisted loop, we should have a small scale figure eight. And if you see that small figure eight, that means you've done it correctly. So at this point, we're just gonna take the tip of our Lillian and pull to cinch that knot down. After cinching that down tightly, our stopper knot is now completed and our Lillian is prepared, and now it's time to go ahead and prepare our level line. So the method I'm going to be using today is one that is based on a method I saw demonstrated by Jason Class. And his method involves attaching a loop made of some braided material to the end of the level line. This type of loop comes standard on most of the furled or floating tin car lines that you can purchase. And these loops allow for the lines to be easily attached to and removed from the Lillian using the girth hitch knot, and we'll cover that knot just a little bit later. So first I'm going to create my braided loop and for that I'm going to need a 16 inch piece of some eight strand braid. After cutting off my 16 inch section here, I'm just going to fold it over and line up the ends. And right here close to the end, I'm going to form an overhand knot. And now I have a closed loop of some braided line approximately seven to eight inches in length. Now we're ready to tie our braided loop to our level line. And in Jason Class's demonstration, he used fly line backing instead of the braided line, and he tied these two together by using an overhand knot. And I think if you're going to be fishing for small trout and panfish and things of that size, that's probably sufficient, but I'm going to be chasing some larger species like five pound smallmouth bass and steelhead, maybe even king salmon, large northern pike, muskie, all kinds of different stuff. And I just wouldn't trust an overhand knot with any of those larger fish, so instead, we're going to be tying an Alberto knot. So to tie the Alberto knot, I'm first going to fold over about eight inches of my level line, and I'm going to secure that first with my pinky finger and ring finger, and then next with my middle finger, and lastly with my index finger and thumb. 
What I've created here is about a three inch long folded loop with my level line and by weaving it in and out of my fingers, all I've done is secure that line so that it won't slip between my fingers. Next, we wanna take the knotted end of our braided loop here and I'm going to feed that up through our level line loop and then I'm gonna pull that through until we only have about an inch of our braided loop sticking out. Next, I'll take the index finger of my dominant hand and I'm going to insert that into the loop and I'm going to apply tension against that braided loop to hold it in place. And now using my free fingers, I'm going to perform four wraps with my braided loop around my level line loop. Once I've performed those four wraps, I can now pinch that final wrap with my non-dominant hand, and I can remove my pointer finger of my dominant hand from the level line loop. At this stage, I am now going to take the knotted end of our braided loop, and I'm going to wrap that back up the level line loop, filling in the gaps of our initial wraps. Once I've made it all the way back to the level line loop, I'm going to take the knotted end of my braided loop and I'm going to put it through my level line loop so that it exits in the same direction as the other end. As you can see here, both ends of my braided loop are exiting through the bottom of that level line loop. At this stage, we're ready to cinch it down and so we're gonna grab both ends of our braided loop and we're gonna slowly start to pull that to cinch it down. When we get far enough, I'm going to get a better grip on both my level line and my braided loop, and I'm gonna pull that tightly until I get it nice and cinched down. After cinching that down tightly, you should have a nice sleek knot profile that looks like this. So now I'm going to trim my level line tag end close to that knot. And then we can trim off the knotted end of our braided loop. And what we're left with here is a braided loop attached to our level line with a super strong Alberto knot. Now really quick, if you're a knot tying aficionado and you're wondering why I only made four wraps with the Alberto knot instead of seven, it's because we were using doubled braided line. Since we were tying it with doubled braided line, our braid to fluorocarbon contact here is the equivalent of eight wraps since we made four and it was with two lines. And just in case you want to see the Alberto knot performed a little bit slower and easier to follow, I'll put a link to my Alberto knot tutorial video up here in the top right corner. And now back to our loop because we're actually not done yet. We need to create a little tag in our loop that will aid us in removing it from our Lillian when it's time to change lines. And we're going to create this with a knot that I've already demonstrated in this video, the figure eight loop knot. But first I'm going to show you why you don't want to use an overhand knot. So first I'm just going to tie a simple overhand knot. And now observe as I demonstrate why the overhand knot sucks. That's why. So now let's try a figure eight knot. And now let's try to get this one to slide much, much better. Now it is possible for the figure eight knot to slide if you pull hard enough, but it's just a lot more difficult than it is with that overhand knot. And now you could definitely be done at this point and this will work tremendously for you, but I've got a couple of optional steps for the perfectionist out there. Now I'm going to take some thin, hard UV resin, in this case, solar res bone dry, and I'm going to apply just a tiny bit to my little figure eight knot and this little tag at the end here, as well as my Alberto knot. And each time I apply it, I'm going to hit it with my UV light here, just to cure that resin.
So that thin, hard UV resin really soaks into the braid, and then when you cure it, it hardens. And as a result, we have reinforced our figure eight knot here and the tag, and that's gonna prevent that from sliding. And we've also strengthened and reinforced that braid in the Alberto knot, and that's made it basically invincible. And now for good measure, and again, this is completely optional, I'm going to add another layer of protection to this Alberto knot using some flexible UV resin. And right here I'm just using my bodkin tool just to spread it around evenly. And as I'm spreading this, I want to make sure I also cover up the tag end of the level line, that small tiny little tag end. Once that has been spread around the knot nice and evenly, I'm going to hit that again with my UV torch. And once that resin has fully cured and is no longer tacky, now we have an extremely strong, dare I say, unbreakable level line loop connection utilizing a resin reinforced Alberto knot. In fact, I'm so confident that this won't break. If it does, I'll buy the first person who calls me out on it a dragon tail hellbender rod. And you have my word, I won't cut it out of the video. And now it's time to attach our level line to our Lillian. And I'm going to be doing this using the girth hitch knot. And this is definitely the simplest of the three knots I'm demonstrating in this video. So anytime we attach a new line to our Lillian, the first thing we wanna do is remove our tip plug. And if we pull out our Lillian and the tip section of our rod here, you'll notice that the tip section is extremely thin and it is by far the most fragile part of the Tenkara rod. So what we want to do is expose only the soft portion of our Lillian here, and then we want to reinsert our tip plug. And you should do this anytime that you're attaching or removing a line or working with the Lillian at all, just to protect that tip section of your rod. So now to perform the girth hitch knot, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reach through my loop here and grab my level line and pull that through the loop. And by doing this, you'll see that I have now created another loop here. Now I'm going to take my new loop here, and I'm going to place that around the Lillian, just above the stopper knot. And now I'm going to grab the end of my Lillian here, and then I'm going to pull on my level line to cinch that loop down just behind that stopper knot. And what we have here now is an unbreakable level line loop connection. And now when I hook up with a big northern pike or a steelhead or a big lake trout, this is the last thing I'm gonna be worried about. And when we are ready to remove the line and attach a new one, all we have to do is take our tag here and pull that, and the line comes right off. And having the ability to quickly and efficiently change out your lines is one of the primary advantages of Tinkara. And since Tinkara is a very limited style of fishing with advantages only in specific situations, you don't wanna remove advantages like that. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video and I hope you did find it helpful. If you're a Tinkara fisherman or you're interested in trying it out, I've partnered with some amazing American Tinkara companies and I have links to their websites down in the description as well as some discount codes that can save you money on Tinkara gear. I'm going to be producing a lot of Tinkara content this year, but the conventional fishing stuff, the western fly fishing, and the ice fishing stuff is not going anywhere. But we're going to try to make some things happen this year that haven't been done on YouTube before with the Tinkara rod, so I hope you guys will enjoy it. Hope you guys have an awesome day, catch a bunch of big fish, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye!